morning. My name is Daniel. And my name is Karen. We hope you're doing well. Welcome to Harvest at Home. We're honestly so glad that you've decided to join us this morning for our incredible service. Shout out to the families who are watching together. And hi kids, we've got some videos and activity sheets for you. After worship, maybe ask your parents to head to hcfcornwall.ca slash kids and you can see a video prepared just for you this morning. Hey, if this is your very first time attending a service at Harvest Christian Fellowship, welcome. Yeah. We absolutely love meeting new people, seeing new faces, or in the case of lockdown, seeing new names pop up in our chat. Throughout the service, the chat is a great place to meet new people, share prayer needs or testimonies of what God is doing in our lives. We encourage you to engage with one another throughout the service as we meet with Jesus together. Worship is about to start, and many of you probably know what I'm about to say, but as always, we encourage you to actually stand up right where you are. Change your posture, turn up your TV or your phone speakers, and get lost in the goodness of God. As we worship Him together, there's really nothing like His presence, and there's no limit to where He can reach you.
Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of Stronger 
You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out Give life, you want love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart.
Whether you've never been to church before or you've been around church your whole life, if you're new to Harvest, step one is for you. This event is designed to help you learn more about our church's history, what we believe, and how you can get involved. During lockdown, we are offering an online version of this program, and we can't wait to get you started. Simply go to hcfcornwall.ca slash step one and begin your journey at Harvest. Hello, Harvest. Hello, hello to everyone. Finally, we, we got the yes from the Canadian Embassy in uh, Turkey and we also finished all of our medical checks on that same day. So uh, the officer told us in an average and normal situation that would be like three months that we can be there in Cornwall. But uh, this situation is the normal right now because of pandemic. So uh, it, doesn't ma- it doesn't really matter because we, we trust in God's timing. So whenever, whenever is uh, the timing, would uh, would be it's it's all okay but still we wanted to say thank you for all of your prayers uh, everything your that messages. all of your messages that yeah. that you've sent and you were standing with us in this process thank you thank you so much there is no word to express how much we appreciate it for each and every one of you yeah and uh... In this moment that all of uh, our joy and happiness is, uh, most of them, I think it's because of your prayer. And we are so thankful that we have such a good family that uh, are waiting for us to come and uh, standing for us uh, in prayers. uh, And uh, we don't know how to say thank you. There is no word to express uh, our thankfulness. So just keep praying for us. We can't wait to come uh, and see you in person. And all we need is to waiting for our visas. And uh, yeah, we just trust God. Thank you so much uh, for everything. Yes, we love you so much. You take care of yourself and we will see you very soon. Yes. <laughs> Hey church, we are so excited that Ali Reyes and Atar are going to be with us here in Cornwall so soon. They are already such a big part of our Harvest family and it is such an honor that we get to partner with them and prepare a home for them when they arrive here in Canada. Over the next few weeks, we are going to be sharing with you different opportunities that you'll be able to partner with us to help prepare this home for them. We'll have an online registry where you'll be able to view and purchase all the items needed to furnish this home, as well as a meal train account so that you can sign up and help prepare meals for them while they're in quarantine. There'll be many opportunities over the next few weeks that we're going to be sharing with you. But for now, church, what we need for you to do is to continue praying for Ali Reza and Atar as they are preparing to leave Turkey and to pray for us that we find the perfect home for them to prepare and have ready for them when they arrive here in Canada. Ali Reza and Atar, we are so excited that you are going to be here with us so soon. We cannot wait to finally meet you in person. Oh, my goodness. Ali Reza and Atar are going to be here anytime. Yeah, they're watching this morning. It's so exciting. They are online, yeah. We can't wait for you guys to get here. Also, um, can I give a shout out this morning to my cousin Ken Wright, watching all the way from the East Coast. All right. You know, who says we can't be with family? <laughs> Near or far, we're together, right? Cousin Ken, welcome. <laughs> it's exciting. We're excited to be here this morning. What a great morning. Yeah, yeah. we are uh, so excited to be with you. We said excited a lot. Are you excited? I'm excited. We said excited a lot. I'm just excited to be out of the house. <laughs> I think that's what I'm excited about. Yeah, I, I hear you. It feels like jail, but uh, we're talking about expansion. There's new yeah. days New days coming. We're expanding out of our house. We're expanding out of our clothing. We're expanding out of everything. I mean, we got to get back to routine because this has got to give here soon. <laughs> Hey, listen, yesterday was amazing. I'm so proud of Harvest and the way you responded in Serve Day. And it just lined up that we were able to work with the Adoptive Street, and they allowed us to do a one-day blitz. So uh, Aaron and I had a street. We had St. Felix Street. If you're watching, yeah. anybody watching on St. Felix Street today, I hope we did a great job. We really, we really got a lot of garbage and uh, cleaned up. But when we finished, we headed down to um, the harbor area, and the corner of Edward and Harbor Street. And so I'm coming around the corner, Christina, and I mean, all of a sudden, all I can see is cars, 
lined up on the side of the road, which are all the serve day people, and then red shirts. 86 people signed up and came and were a part of serve day. Um, if we were in the room today, there would be loud applause. Go ahead and give That's yourself our church. applause. Come yeah, on. Come That's on. our church. Just That's what they do. A practical yeah. expression of love to our city. And, That's uh, right. And shout out to Mia. She's uh, she not, she back in the office. She's off her mat leave. And yeah. we have missed Mia so much in the One office. One thing about Mia is she knows how to organize, organize. And oh strategize, and execute. It was an amazing, an amazing event. Well, we're yeah. going to jump into... Uh, um, the sermon this morning, and uh, would you would you just pray for us this morning, honey, that uh, Lord will speak and uh, we'll get something out of this today. Father, we're just praying this morning, God, for this word, God, for whatever you want us to carry, whatever you want us to take, God, we're willing to go, we're willing to do, we're willing to take the task. Father, I just pray for expansion, and those that are believing this morning for expansion, God, that you're going to expand borders and expand boundaries, and God, we're just trusting you because we know you have great things, God. 86 people serving God is going to turn into thousands, God, in the future, Father. We Come just on. pray for the expansion of our city of Cornwall, God, yes, and for our church. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 You come back at the end of the service? Pray for some... I'll this. think about it. You'll think about yeah. it. All right. Well, no, you go, I'll be here. You go think about it, and I'm going to preach. Okay. All right. Here we go. Expansion, there must be more, part two. And uh, uh, last week, uh, we started this series, and I just began to kind of uh, share and unload my heart a little bit about what I believe uh, is in the days ahead. And I believe that Lord speaks today and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are alive today and the gift of prophecy to uh, exhort and edify and stir up and begin to have an understanding of what God's will is for our lives. So I'm sharing this series to get us ready for the days uh, that are ahead and uh, there must be there must be more. That's our, that's our heart's cry because that was the heart's cry of David in Psalm 118, verse 5. I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me, and he brought me in a broad place. And uh, my paraphrase of that, based on last week, and if you didn't get last week's service, I would just encourage you to jump back and get that. I prayed from the place of restriction and the Lord heard me, and he brought me to a place of expansion. What David was praying, he said, Lord, there must be more. There must be more. And God's response, of course, was there is more. There is expansion. And I think we're coming into some great days of expansion. We've heard some stories already. If you are experiencing an expansion story, would you just share it with us? Uh, I have some things that I'll be sharing in the days ahead. I had meetings this week. Uh, there were meetings about the maternity home. There were meetings about some things that are developing. I wish I could share it all with you this morning. There is no question. We are right on the edge of stepping into a great season of expansion. Two words from the New Testament uh, using Greek. We don't do that very often, but that's the language that the New Testament was written in. And uh, so sometimes uh, something's lost in the translation. And the word time has two words. And so if you don't know that, you don't recognize it, there is chronos time, and that's the seconds and the minutes, uh, the weeks, the months. But then there was also the Scriptures talk about keros time. And that is the divine calendar of heaven, God's time, God's plan, God's opportunities. The Kairos moments are the seasons in God where God is doing something in spite and despite of what's happening around us in circumstances. And I submitted to you last week that I believe we're entering a season of God's favor, of God's grace for expansion in our individual lives, our families, our church, hey, even our city. Even our city, I believe there's great days for our city ahead. Christina and I have experienced seasons of expansion in our life. And so really what I want to share today is from experience, this isn't a textbook, <laughs> this isn't something that I read somewhere, but we in our lives have experienced uh, seasons of expansion. And what I mean by that is that there's not an incremental increase in our life, but there was a, um, a rather large increase in influence, in opportunity, in blessing, in finances, in provision, and that came in our lives um, that expanded us, expanded us as people, expanded our ministries, expanded what we were doing, 
expanded our authority in God, expanded everything in our lives. And um, those seasons of expansion are not just for us to enjoy, though they are so enjoyable, <laughs> they are so wonderful, but they are seasons that are making room, it's an opportunity in God, making room for what God wants to do in your life and in my life. And right now in our, in our lives at Harvest, I believe there's so much more. There must be more, was David's cry, and there is more. And God says, I have to expand you so that you can get the more done. It's for kingdom expansion. It's for people to come to know Jesus, the sick to be healed, the lame to walk, that God's plan on planet Earth would come to fulfillment in these days. We talked last week that these are actually the greatest days as we approach the end. Some would claim that they're the gloomiest days, the darkest days, but the Scriptures declare these are the greatest days for the church, the days that we stand bright, arise, shine, for your light has come. These are the greatest days. And so we have experienced expansion, and the greatest expansion, I would say, as we've talked about this, uh, was uh, a number of years ago, when um, we were getting ready to uh, leave Ontario, from uh, I was a youth pastor uh, in Brockville, Ontario, and uh, we were experiencing a, a restriction in many, many ways of our life. Um, and there's not enough time. It's another day and another story. We can maybe share some of those things, but we were feeling restriction in every area of our life. And our prayer began to be like the prayer of David. There must be more. And God uh, began to stir our hearts. He began to speak to us uh, about a move and an expansion that would happen. I want you to look at a, a scripture, and uh, I'll refer back to our story here a few times this week and again next week. So draw out some of these principles, because I want you <laughs> to understand what's happening in this season of expansion. Not an incremental increase, but I believe a pronounced increase of favor, the favor of God to increase you as an individual, your family, our church, and our city. Ephesians 5, 15, 17. Be careful, be very careful, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. I want to unpack this verse for us this morning. If you're taking notes at home, this is a good time to kind of uh, just jot down some notes uh, about what, what Paul is teaching the Ephesian church and what he's teaching today to the church at Harvest. He begins by saying, be very careful how you live. I had a riot this week. I got to... Uh, uh, rehearse some childhood memories of riding a dirt bike, and uh, Murray Bamber uh, loves to motocross, and he, uh, he offered me a, a bike to ride, and we went to a track, and I saw the video this morning. I looked like I was competing in the eight-year-old division. <laughs> it's been a long time, but it was so fun, and uh, I told my kids about it, and they remember uh, a number of years ago, uh, they had BMX bikes, pedal bikes, and I built a ramp on the driveway, and Dad had to be the first one to test it out, and I did, except I landed on the nose of the bicycle and went over the top and dislocated my shoulder. And so I told my kids, man, I can't wait to get on the dirt bikes on Friday. Uh, and, uh, and so one of the kids texted me back and said, Dad, be very careful. You remember what happened the last time. And so I'm happy to say I'm in one piece. I didn't dislocate anything, but I rode really cautiously. Paul saying, be very careful. So it makes it sounds like there's some danger here. Sounds like we, we need to pay attention. What is the danger? What is he pointing out? What could happen wrong if we're not reading the scriptures? Be very careful how you live. Be careful how you live. And what he's saying to us this morning is we are to live with intentionality when it comes to the things of God. So many of us can just live life one day after the next, not thinking about what tomorrow holds. And the Bible says we're not supposed to worry about tomorrow, but we're supposed to think about it. We can plan for it. We can know what God has for us. And so Paul is saying be very careful to live 
with intentionality, to live understanding God's will, to know what God has for you. Don't live life just, you know, uh, que sola sola, but uh, live life with some intentionality. Live life on purpose. You don't just have to have your life blown around by the wind of circumstances. And that's what's happening to many people right now, even through COVID. They th- feel like COVID is the giant, the all-powerful one that is paralyzing them, and they're not able to live their life the way they would want to. Now, I know there is restrictions, but we are coming into a time of expansion, and we can live life on purpose with intentionality. Don't let circumstances direct your life. He goes on to say the reason. So what then, if we're going to live our lives with intentionality, how do we do that? What leads my life? How do I intentionally direct and lead my life? He tells us at the end of the verse. He says, understand what the Lord's will is. Get knowledge about His will. Uh, So now that I get knowledge, and I'm suggesting that I'm giving some knowledge for the future, expansion, God wants to expand us, increase us. With knowledge, I need wisdom. It's not enough to know. (laughs) I need understanding and wisdom to know how to apply what I know. And so we can get wisdom and we can get knowledge from the Lord. He says, now, when you have knowledge of God's will in our lives, as God begins to speak what His will is, we're not unwise without wisdom, but we are wise with wisdom. And how do we use this wisdom? What is the wisdom of God when it comes to the knowledge of His will? I'm unpacking this verse for us today. What is wisdom is knowing what God's will is and now making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. It's wisdom to make the most of the opportunity. Now let me just chat a little bit about the days are evil. What does that mean? Well, it simply means this, that we live in a world that doesn't work the way it should. That sin entered this world, Adam and Eve, through their disobedience, allowed sin to come into the world. And God allowed sin to be in the world to frustrate humanity, to say, we can't make it on our own. And we need a relationship with God. We need a relationship with Jesus And Jesus comes as a baby, he goes to the cross, we call it Easter, and he provides a way that takes care of sin so mankind can realize, I don't earn it, I don't deserve it, I can't do anything about my condition or this world's condition, listen now, but God can. And so God has had a plan from the very beginning. And God's plan is unfolding, we call it, remember, there's there's chronos time, there, there, we're heading somewhere, uh, day after day, month after month, year after year, time, there's history behind us, and there's time in front of us. But God has a plan, and it's called chaos time. It is the time schedule of God. It's God's plan to come into this world and to begin to release His glory, to begin to release His kingdom, to begin to release healing, to begin to release salvation. Come on, begin to undo what sin has done, that God in His grace is pouring it out and He's using His church today to pour out the good news of the gospel with signs and wonders following. We're going to be talking about that in September. We're going to talk about uh, the Holy Spirit's work in our lives today. It's, It's going to be awesome. But let's get back to today. Opportune time, making the most. The days are evil that we live in, meaning, meaning that the world still doesn't work the way it should. That God hasn't created the new heavens and the new earth yet. But we're heading in that direction. And in the meantime, the opportunities, the chaos moments of God are unfolding through his people. Make the most. How How do we use wisdom as a Christ follower? By making the most out of the chaos opportunities that God gives us. We want to make the most. We want to understand, and that's why I'm sharing with you today, so that we can make the most of the expansion that's coming our way. Now, I mentioned that Christine and I 
have experienced some of these expansions. Probably the biggest one, as I said, was in uh, many years ago, 1990, uh, an expansion that took us from Canada into the United States. Um, and as we were experiencing uh, the frustration of restriction in our life in every way, we began to pray there must be more. We began there. There must be more than this. We were cross-border shopping one day uh, in Messina. Messina had built uh, a mall that's now a ghost town, but back in those days, a brand new mall that was built for Canadian dollars for Canadians to come over and spend. And uh, we were living in Brockville, and we took advantage of this new mall and heard about it. We headed that way. And when we did, we were driving through town, and I saw a church building that did not fit a town of 9,000, which is about the population of Cornwall. This massive 36,000 square foot with an auditorium that seats hundreds of people. Like, I mean, 800 people at that time. Uh, and the, the, the auditorium, they've since done some renovations, utilized some space. But, uh, I mean, it just, it was, it was an expansive, expansive, hope you got that word. Uh, they were in a season of expansion themselves, this church that we knew nothing about. But we stopped on this particular day and we went in to the church and uh, there were some folks cleaning, getting it ready for Sunday morning. It was Saturday afternoon and they were getting ready uh, for the Sunday morning service. And, uh, and so we began to talk to them about their church and what it was about and they were excited. I mean, they were vibrating. Uh, they were just telling us about the season. this building was a new building, a new, there was a new expansion physically. Uh, God was uh, seeing people saved. They were planting churches. And I mean, I'm just in awe because it was strange for me. I'll just be honest. It was strange for me to hear people talk positively about church because my experience had been that if you were to go into a church building on a Saturday and somebody was there, it was because they were the only ones that could serve and they were grumbling and mumbling about it and they were complaining about their church. But here I was, people were signed up and they wanted to serve and they were just excited about what was going. And Christine and I talked after and we said, man, you know, we need to check this church out. They're in a season of expansion. We're, we're praying about restriction. There must be more. Well, I went and checked out a service um, because we were still on staff at the church uh, that I was at in Brockville, and I snuck out. They had a midweek service on a Thursday night, and so I was doing reconnaissance. I didn't know anything about this church. I thought I'd go in for a service, and I did, and and uh, they had guest ministry uh, that evening, and his name was Danny Bonilla. Danny just recently, uh, due to COVID complications, passed away. Uh, and, uh, but Danny became a dear friend and a friend of this church, Harvest. But on my first meeting, he was just a guest ministry prophetic gift as he began to pray. But he began to pray this. It was a crazy prayer. He said, man has put you in a chicken coop. And you were born to soar as an eagle. You need to get out of the chicken coop and run for your life. And you need to begin to soar like an eagle. And what I was hearing in the prophetic word from God confirming, you've been restricted, but God's about to expand you. <laughs> well, we held on to that word, and, and, uh, and we just believed that God was going to take us from a place of restriction to a place of expansion, a place of more opportunity. Remember, to live our lives with purpose and direction. And God was leading Christine and I. And at that time, uh, we had uh, two little ones. Uh, Nathaniel was four, uh, and Andrew was two, and Christina uh, was quite pronounced pregnant with Ethan, uh, our number three that would be born uh, a few months after. Number one this morning, I want to give you this principle. Get ready for expansion. Get ready for expansion. When you begin to pray and you begin to hear God saying to you, whether it's these sermons, whether the prophetic word that I'm releasing, or you're hearing it in your own prayer time, and, and sometimes those things will converge. You're reading the scriptures, and you're hearing expansion. You're hearing it in the news. You'll begin to hear this word more and more. It'll confirm to your heart, and you'll go, I'm hearing God. I need to get ready for what God is speaking. Number one, get ready for expansion. Think about expansion. Dream about 
about expansion. Pray about expansion. Fan into flame something you've been believing God for. Circumstances right now are saying restriction, but I want you to begin to pray and know that expansion's on the way. You need to get ready for expansion. It doesn't just drop down in your lap one day. You're ready for it. You're thinking about, praying about, dreaming about, prophesying about expansion. Expansion in your life. If God doesn't give us the knowledge of His will, we can't make the most of the opportunity. Begin to ask God. Begin to pray. Begin to say, God, I'm thinking about this. I want to know more about this, God. I want to hear you. Begin to confirm expansion. As a church, I want you to be ready for expansion. As I'm going to be sharing in uh, next week, just some practical ways we're going to get ready for this church to expand. Jesus was sitting uh, in the final moments of, of the progression toward the cross with his disciples, the Last Supper. They're, they're going to enjoy the last meal together. And we read this in John. So he got up from the table and he took off his robe. He wrapped a towel around his waist and he poured water into a basin. And then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with a towel he had around him. This was work that was given to the servants. The guys would have sat around the table and it would be expected that when they entered the room that someone would have washed their feet. And for whatever reason, that didn't happen. But Jesus stood up to the task of washing his disciples' feet. I want you to think about this thought. You know, we say things like, I serve Jesus. I serve Jesus. I serve His will. He's my Master. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. I love Jesus. But I want you to think this morning that Jesus serves us as well. Now, that may be a strange phrase for you to hear. But the very Creator of the universe seeks in His love for you to serve you. And He served His disciples and I want you to see this. You've got to get this. He wants to serve you in a capacity today in the same way. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said, Lord, you're going to wash my feet? It was one of those questions that's asked in a way that he wasn't really asking a question. He's saying, Jesus, this is just weird. I don't want you to do this. This isn't the ordinary. This isn't the normal. This isn't what I expect. And he challenges Jesus on the act of washing his feet. I want you to see Jesus' reply. He's saying it to you and I this morning. You don't understand now. Yeah, I wish you were in the room because I would go, say now. And you would go, no. Because <laughs> that word is so important. It's a chronos now. It's in the moment now. It's on Sunday morning, on this day in May, right now, at, a, at, 10, at 10 o'clock, 11 minutes after now. You don't understand in this moment of Kronos. You don't understand what I'm doing. You can't understand it. You couldn't fully understand it, Peter. But you need to make the most of the opportunity that I'm about to present you with. You don't understand it now, but someday you will. On the other side of the Kairos, moment, you'll understand. When you walk through this season with me, you will understand. And so Jesus takes Peter by the foot, as he did with all the disciples, as he does with you and I this morning, and he washes our feet. He washes our feet. He washes our feet. Why? Because the feet are symbolic of journey, and we're about to journey just like they were, to a place of restriction to expansion. In just a few verses, Jesus will say to his disciples, it's better that I go. It's better that I go. They didn't understand what that meant. What do you mean it's better? I'm sending the Holy Spirit. Fifty days after that, when the Holy Spirit came and birthed the church, and 2,000 people got saved, and there were signs and wonders, and the glory of God was spreading like wildfire all over the world. And God says that in the last days, not the days of darkness, not the days of tribulation and all the alarms that we're hearing today by people who are misunderstanding Scripture, but Jesus said that in the last days, the church would be its brightest. It would be its strongest. In fact, the 
Old Testament prophesies that that house of God in these latter days will be greater than it was in the first century in the former days. Come on, get excited because God, just like these disciples, he washed their feet. He said, you don't understand the journey you're about to go on, but I'm washing your feet to prepare you. I'm getting you ready for what is ahead of you. And he understands that we don't understand. He gets that we don't fully understand that we need to trust Him. And so He serves us today. He serves us right in this moment by washing our feet. Washing our feet. Why? So that we can get ready. Get ready. Allow Him in these days to wash your journey and get you ready as you're thinking about, praying about what God has for you. I remember as God was getting Christine and I ready for expansion, I just wanted to know, God, would you tell me in detail? <laughs> would you kind of unfold this? And this is going to sound weird to you, but uh, it, and it sounds weird to me telling you, but I wanted so desperately to know the details of what God had for me. Like Peter, I think. God, could you just kind of just explain this a little bit? Can you just tell me maybe what it looks like in 10 years from now then? Or tell me what it looks like. I just need to know. And we were, I was in our kitchen alone, and I was praying, God, you've just got to show me. And I literally went to the cupboards. I was remembering this this week as I sat. I work from home, uh, and uh, my home office is in the kitchen. And as I was remembering, preparing this morning, I looked. I looked at the cupboards, and I opened them up, <laughs> just symbolically of what I did years ago. I said, God, would you just let a movie screen <laughs> appear in the cupboard? And show me so I can know. I remember I opened the cupboard and there was no movie screen. There was just cups. And this week as I rehearsed it again, I laughed to myself. I said, Jesus, thank you for not showing me everything because it would have scared the bejeebers out of me. (laughs) I wouldn't have understood. I wouldn't have understood. Instead, Instead, what he does is he shares with us one step at a time one step at a time, as, as um, the Scriptures tell us, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. He gives you just enough to go one step at a time. His word is a light. And that word literally means one step at a time. But let him wash your feet. He doesn't expect you to fully understand. He said this is for another time. But you're going to get there. You're going to be successful. God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. They were in slavery to Pharaoh and symbolic of our slavery to sin. They were in a land of not enough. There wasn't enough. They were in poverty. They were slaves. There was not enough food, not enough clothes, not enough hours in a day, not enough straw to make bricks. And God brought them to the edge of the Red Sea, and he made a way where there was no way. And they crossed the Red Sea, and they went to the land of of just enough. The Bible says their clothes never wore out. They had just enough clothes, just enough shoes, just enough food, as each and every day manna was provided. But that wasn't the end of their journey. God was taking them to the land of more than enough, a land that would have as they would cross the Jordan River into the promised land that they would know a land of milk, more than enough milk, more than enough honey, more than enough properties, more than enough finances, more than enough because God was taking them to a promised land of expansion where God was going to increase his name on the earth. I want you to pick up the story today as I read in Joshua chapter 1 that they're getting ready now to cross the Jordan River and receive the land of expansion, the land of more than enough. Go through the camp and tell the people to get their provisions ready. You'll cross the Jordan River. You will cross the Jordan River. You will cross the Jordan River and take possession of the land that the Lord God is giving you. He's not just speaking it to the people in Joshua's day. He's speaking it to you this morning. You will make it to your place of expansion. Now, when God would lead the people in procession, he would put the priests out front, and they would carry the Ark of the Covenant 
a box where God's presence and the tablets were, like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Well, there literally was an ark of God's covenant, and God's presence was above and around and in the ark. It was symbolic of God's presence. God's presence, God's voice, God's direction leads us into opportunity. They're about, remember I talked about we know the will of God, and with wisdom we're going to make the most. How do we make the most? Number one, as I've shared with you today, start thinking about it. Number two, as we're going to uh, see this point, the second principle, uh, don't wait for your opportunity. Don't wait for your opportunity. Look now, as the Ark of the Covenant with the priests are about to head over the Jordan River, it says this, it was the harvest season and the Jordan was overflowing its banks. This was the worst season to cross a river. This was not a good season to be taking a, 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 a potentially millions of people, children, livestock, <laughs> possessions over a river. <laughs> this is not the time. The mountain snows have just melted. The water is swift. It is the highest water level of the Jordan River. You could almost do it on, in a summer, a dry summer day, but you wouldn't be able to do it on this day. On this day, circumstances are saying you can't cross. Circumstances are saying we should wait until things get better. I'll tell you this right now, that as you get ready to go into your season of expansion, don't wait. When God says it's time, you need to jump because it's time. You need to step in because it's time. When God's Spirit begins to stir us, as I believe He's stirring us now, we don't wait because the opportunity or the moment of grace in God is like a doorway, a portal that opens. Don't wait because it will close. You'll lose your opportunity. And it's not as if another opportunity down the road might not come, but we want to get into this opportunity in these days. And so we don't want to wait for the opportunity. The Bible says that the Jordan was overflowing its banks. This was not the season. It was a season of restriction. They were in a restricted time because of floodwaters. Don't wait for the conditions to be just right in your life to step into what God has for you. It doesn't work that way. Maybe things will be better. And when I'm doing better, don't wait for you to be feeling better. Let God allow you to take your step into expansion. But as soon as the feet of the priests who were carrying the ark touched the water at the river's edge, the water above that point began backing up until the riverbed was dry, and the people crossed over. They crossed over on dry ground. They stepped in. They got their tootsie toes wet. They didn't cannonball into the deep end. God wasn't asking them. I love this about the Lord. He's not asking you to cannonball into the deep end. He's asking you to take a step toward expansion. Just take a step. Next week, I'm going to talk to us about how to begin to take steps. Number three, step toward expansion and watch the miracles. Step toward expansion and begin to watch the miracles. You only have to be ankle deep. You just have to walk toward what God is speaking in your life. Christina and I, back in this day of expansion, we're going to have to cross the St. Lawrence River. That was our river to cross. We made the decisions. We were living in Brockville, and there was a witness, you know, that we were to get out of a chicken coop and move into what God had, and, and that, that, that began to mean a lot of things to us. We began to realize that it could mean leaving our country, leaving family behind because we would be moving out of our country, uh, leaving our denominational understanding that we both grew up in, and that's all we knew. Everything was kind of new, and we decided that would be like the cannonball in the deep end, and we weren't ready for that, but we were ready to step toward. And so every Thursday evening, we would pack up our two little kids, uh, uh, Nathaniel and Andrew, in the back seat of what we affectionately called the little white limo. <laughs> it was uh, a, an old, falling apart uh, Pontiac Acadian. And in faith, because it took faith every time we used it, put the boys in the back seat, Christina pregnant with Ethan in the front seat, and myself, but there was grace. We would travel one hour to the service. And we did that for one year. 
That was our step toward, get our ankles a little bit wet. We did it for one year, and every Sunday we would do it. And uh, as we look back, we just re- recall the grace. Was it hard? I'm sure it must have been, but we didn't feel like it. There was such grace and favor as we were moving and taking a step toward what God was saying. A year would go by of doing that, and that was the step. And God began to confirm that His expansion, it would mean us having to move, and that was the desire of our heart. We'd like to relocate, go to a new country. Well, that's impossible. We had no means to cross into the United States to live. I happened to be in that time period uh, attending uh, a service in Montreal, and uh, the gentleman that was leading uh, the the meeting also was uh, prophetically gifted. He picked me out of a room of about 100 people. He said, I want you to stand up. I believe God's speaking to you. He'd never met me. He didn't know me. But he might as well have been sitting in my living room and around my kitchen table hearing every conversation Christine and I had been having for months and months. He began to prophesy. He said, God's about to take you to a new place. You're about to cross over the river. You're about to get to the other side. Remember I just read about Jordan. You will get to the other side. He began to prophesy, you will get to the other side of the river. You will know expansion. And he began to stir my heart, and I began to realize that God was speaking. And as we began to pray more fervently, our feet were wet. We were stepping toward it. And now I heard the promise of God. God would open up a way. Shortly after that, the church invited uh, Christina and I to consider the move, and it would happen. Uh, I would take over the Christian day school and, and provide uh, overseership of the Christian day school that was at the church, and we applied for a religious worker's visa. The day that we were crossing over the border, and the final step of our religious worker's visa was us crossing in with our 26-foot rider. Honey, come and join me. We're going to close the service. My 26-foot rider truck <laughs> full of all of our stuff, Christina in the little white limo behind. I pull up to the border in Prescott, and uh, I roll down my window. I'm excited. Hi, I'm moving to the United States. They go, really? Yeah, you know, I've begun this visa process. They go, we'll need to see your birth certificate. Birth certificate? I, what am I... This is, you know, back in the day, you didn't need a passport. You didn't need all the stuff we need yeah. today. And I said, I, I, I lost my birth certificate years ago. I'm sorry. I don't have a birth certificate that I can show you. I mean, I'm here. I was born, but I don't have a birth certificate. He said, how about your driver's license? Yeah. So, <laughs> so then he asked me, he asked me, uh, well, if you don't have a birth certificate, do you have a passport? No, I didn't have a passport because I didn't have my birth certificate. And he said, well, sir... Do you have a driver's license? <laughs> I mean, God's favor. God is, was with us. I said, I have one of those. And we crossed over into our season of expansion. What I don't have time to unfold for you today is that, that probably the largest expansion in our life in every way. I mean, we were stretched. And sometimes expansion can be painful, but in a good way, as God gets us ready for what's ahead. But Harvest Christian Fellowship wouldn't be here today. All of what God has accomplished, the daycare, heart of the family, child care center, none of what we are experiencing right now would be here. What I'm suggesting to you and what I believe the Lord has spoken to me is I'm hearing God say in my lifetime, and I, you know, whether we like it or not, we're getting older, and there's another generation coming up, and we'll get to be grandparents to another generation and, and coach them on. But I heard God speak, I get to see, we get to see. In our personal lives, as we're coming into this expansion, we're going to see a greater, the, the, the purposes of God and the significance of this expansion will be greater than that expansion. I'm believing if, if we got to see all of this, I can't imagine what we're going to see, Christina, in the days ahead. You're going to make it to the other side. Church, I just hope that today is... You'll just start thinking about. You'll get ready for. You'll let Jesus prepare you by washing your feet. Let Him serve you by calming you down and trusting Him. And then finally, step toward and step, we're going to look next week, step into the miracle and receive it. Just before Christina prays for a lot of needs today, and we're believing for God to do miracles today, I want to ask if there's anyone here today And you've never stepped toward the promise of salvation and eternal life. The Bible says you have to 
step toward it. He called, the Bible calls it repentance. The Bible says we're all going our own way. We're just traveling our own way. And then we hear, and God begins to get our attention like it might be happening to you today. And God's saying, I love you so very much. God so loved the world that he sent his son. And the Bible says repentance simply is changing the way you think about God and changing the way you're going. Turn back and face God today. Oh, he's not angry. You won't. As you turn around to face God this morning, you won't see an angry face. You'll see a loving face with his arms wide open saying, I've been waiting for you. If that's your heart today, to turn and receive God's love and a promise of eternal life, I'd like to lead you in a simple prayer. Christina, help me with this prayer this morning. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. That you love me. That you love me. I have been going my own I way. I have been going my own way. But today. But today. I'm turning around. I'm turning I'm around. I'm facing you. I'm facing I'm you. I'm receiving love. I'm receiving love. Forgive my sin. Forgive my sin. I want to journey I with you. I want to journey with you. For all my life. For all my life. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we believe you're born born again, and you're on your way for the greatest journey your mind can imagine. God bless you. And would you just text, I made the decision. I prayed the prayer. We want to follow up and get make sure you have a Bible and make sure you have everything you need to begin your journey well. You can also send us a text at 613-704-7287. Make sure you let us know. We're excited that you have chosen this new journey. And honestly, it's the best journey of life. You will never regret making the decision to follow Jesus. We just have some prayer requests this morning. Um, let's just pray. Father, I'm just praying this morning, Jesus. God, for the prodigals, God. I'm praying that you yes. will bring them back, God, for, for where they belong bring is such a time as this, God. Yes, Lord. God, even today, bring prodigals home, God. Even in this hour, um, for those that are moving, God, that you will open a way. It's a difficult time, but Father, that you can just make everything easy and smooth, God. We're praying for mental health this morning. Yes, Lord. For those that are struggling yes, in this Lord. time, God, this pandemic. God, we're just praying, Father, that you will meet them in that place. Wherever they are, God, that you Jesus. can meet them yes. and calm the storms, God. Yes, calm, calm the seas, the Father. Just calm it, Father, for marriages this morning, Father. God, that you will become just, Father, that one that sticks them together, God. Yes. Father, that voice yes. in the storm, God, Spansion that you can say this too will pass. And you can make it, God, for illnesses, Father, for those facing cancer and and father for those oh, facing on. a diagnosis god that yes. you can just change the yes. diagnosis yes. in an instant heal. god pray i'm praying for right healing now, god i'm praying Jesus. for an absolute change yes. in diagnosis Come on. this morning yes. father for families god that you will bring families back together yes, where the Lord. enemy heal. is stuck a wedge heal. in god yep. you can put that wedge remove that wedge god we're just praying for families for children god yes, for marriages yes, for all of Lord. this father we just ask this all in your name. Amen. 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 Oh, we believe that even as Christina was praying, yeah. you're receiving miracles day. Healing's happening right yes. now. Yes. Well, that's it for this morning. You know, I kind of feel like um, Dr. Phil we're watching right now, and Robin <laughs> sits down in the audience, and then Dr. Phil calls her up. You're, uh, way, I feel, better I feel, you're way better looking <laughs> than, than Robin. I feel like Robin McGraw. Come on up here. Let's, let's walk off the stage hand in hand. Well, let's do it. God bless you. Come on, you. Harvest. We love you Thank so you for much. serving for all who served yesterday. Thank you, thank you. It's you that makes the difference. And you know what? Yeah. We wouldn't be who we are as Harvest without you, our body behind us. Um, I think of the body just doesn't work without an arm or a leg. That's we need sure. each and every one of you. You are part of our body. Uh, thank you so much for so serving. Just, just before we go this morning, thank you for your patience letting me go a little longer today. Um, just before we go, so if this is going to work, uh, production team, you're hearing this. You've got to catch us, so we're going to go hand in hand. We're going to walk out oh, just like Robin. Oh, honestly. Oh, Robin and Phil, you said it. This is your fault. I said I feel like Before her. you transition to the final announcements, here we go. Give me your hand. Just a minute. What? I got to tell them what we're oh, going to okay. see them back right. here at 9.15 right. next Sunday. It's early. Sunday. It's only 10.32. Normally, it's yeah. like noon. We're going to go out and enjoy the rest but, of our day. Yeah, it's a great day. Enjoy. Make sure you touch base with someone. Ask them how they're doing. Send them a text. But You're touch stalling. You're just stalling for the walkout. I am. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. We love you, Harvest. We love God you bless so much. You. God bless you. Here we go. Okay. Just like, just like, <laughs> just like Phil and Robin. And they're going to transition. <laughs> There's always cool music when Phil and Robin. Oh, we're going out the back doors. Here we go. <laughs>
<laughs> God bless you, Harvest. What an amazing service. So we hope you were blessed. Yeah. And if you uh, said yes to Jesus for the very first time, we're so excited for yeah, you. Yeah, right. this is a really awesome moment. Yeah, we would love to get you a Bible and help get you connected. If you did pray that prayer and you want more information about Jesus or how to just start your journey, simply email us at info at hcfcornwall.ca and one of our staff members will get in touch with you. Yeah, we love you and we're so thankful you decided to join us today. We look forward to seeing you online and soon in person in the future. And you